silently playing cards with feelings. Oh, I just played some creatures. Hello there, the video will have some sprinklings of in-game banter, but as it's slightly older footage, I'll be narrating the majority of this video, because the audio quality is not up to the minimum standard that I want to bring you now. Dan is playing his mill theft, big old drazi nonsense kind of deck, and keeps the greediest hand ever. He starts us off with a tapped watery grave. Nathan is playing Osgir. If you've somehow not seen the most popular Boros, uh, Lawhold commander ever in the wild, it's a reanimator strategy that wants you to sacrifice artifacts for value and bring back haymaker artifacts from the graveyard. He plays a snow covered plains and passes. I'm playing essentially the Galea Precon. I'm looking to suit up an evasive or sticky threat with auras and equipments from the top of my library. I play a forest and pass. Joe is playing the Rampy Stampy Nikia, looking to double his mana and flood the board with massive gruel threats. He plays Sheltered Thicket and passes. Dan plays Command Tower, casts Arcane Signet and passes. Nathan plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and passes. I play a Bant Panorama and cast Fertile Ground, enchanting my forest. Whenever I tap this forest for mana now, it will produce one additional mana of any colour. I pass. Joe plays Rootbound Crag and passes. Dan plays an island and casts Thran Dynamo. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I wish I had the Thran Dynamo. You wish you had a friend on it? Oh, actually, yeah, I do wish I had a friend on it. I only put it in here because there's lots of girls in that. Can't move them. Like a chicken. Oh, here we go. I'm going to look for my friend on it. Does it get artifacts? Artifacts on the channel? I thought there was only a channel for something. I don't know why. It wouldn't be in there, I suppose, would it? Would it? What a stupid cop. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> fuck off. Mr. Two Manor. <laughs> Just be worried. <laughs> <laughs> he passed the same way as Because he wants to make it hard for Francis to edit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think. You never think that's why you always lose! Trying to quit gaming. Right? And Nathan searches for a planes <laughs> and uh, he passes the turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at my hand. Thank you, man. I play an as well. They should bounce that on the enchantment. Thanks guys. Bounce the ban panorama. Yeah, and, and then I tap for two. <laughs> playing a Swiftwood Pits. So I pass the turn to Joseph. At this point, they're taking the pit out of <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> Joe looks at his hand. Who plays? That's the clip that's the most clearly you guys have spoken all night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. done. Yeah, I'm done. You're just gonna have to wait out your fucking crazy bit later. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he gave me the creaky chair because he didn't want to give me the rolly chair. You can have a rolly chair if you want. Hang on, rolly one. Trouble is, our audio is going to be shared anyway. It's going to be like. I can't find this kind of thing. I can't find that one. Sound like Elmo. Sound like we're all trapped in cabinets. Yeah. Trapped in cabinets. Trapped in cabinets. Trapped in cabinets. We're going to get out. Yeah, of course we will. Nathan draws his dynamo plays a snow-covered mountain and casts not dynamo, Solemn Simulacrum. When it enters the battlefield, he can search his library for a basic. He passes. I replay the Bant Panorama and cast Galea. My commander lets me look at and cast auras and equipment from the top of my library, and equipment cast this way can be auto-equipped when it ETBs. I move to equip. In response, I cast uh, Brainstorm. <laughs> in response, Dan track tap because I can see that the wrong one. Dan does not have interaction, so while he decides what to put back, I go to combat and swing Galea at Nathan. He blocks with Simulacrum and draws a card from its death trigger. I pass. Joe plays a forest and passes. Dan plays an island. He goes to combat and swings Una at Nathan. Second main, he casts Thief of Sanity, a super sweet 2-2 flyer that when it deals combat damage to a player gets to look at the top three cards of that player's library and exile one face down that can be cast later for any colour of mana, and puts the other two into the graveyard. He passes. Nathan plays Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts Osgear. His commander can both pay one mana to sacrifice an artifact and give a creature plus two plus O, but it's all about that second ability for which he can pay X mana and tap Osgear to exile an artifact from his yard with mana value equal to X and then create two token copies of the exiled card. 
Thankfully, this ability can only be activated at sorcery speed. He passes. So, you're so annoyed by things like that. Nothing is With the world put to rights, I play Thriving Grove and choose blue. <laughs> Show, what do you think is worse? Athena or Lucy Gibb? Or Dan is going to start living with Oh my oh, god. No, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see one card in the way you see something. Okay. Do, you think, do you think either of them got to go? No, oh, you, can you kill them now? <laughs> huh? Can you kill them now? I can deal with one of them. I don't know which is a problem. Which well, it depends on Nathan's going to put off a soft lock, but he might have said it might shoot on a friend, I don't so probably not. No, probably not, I can't. I cast Netherer's Puzzle Ward straight into the Glare Spot, a delightfully odd and terrible enchantment for this deck. It reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, roll a four-sided dice and scry X, where X is the result. And has a second statting ability that reads, whenever you roll a die's highest natural result, draw a card. I'm going to do some response. Okay. I'm just going to go... I'm going to exile the top five cards in the library. <laughs> I'm going green. Oh no, my, my secret commander. <laughs> See? Oh, fuck's um, sake. I'll keep, I'll keep the white flame. This never shit. goes as well as it should. It should not kill Luna, she'd rob it. She'd just it never goes as well as you want it to go, Luna. Uh, I'm going to use the one white floating that Chris thing onto Galea. Griff Spoon gives Galea plus 1 plus 0 and flying. I send her at Nathan for 5 and then pass the turn. Joe plays Rogue's Passage. He casts his commander. A 5-5 with two static abilities. Its controller can't cast non-creature spells, and whenever its controller taps a land for mana, they add one additional mana of any type that that land produced. He passes. I'm just going to fly at Nathan 1. You got no blockers over there. No. Right. So you take one damage. Right. Question. Question. Do that. In my second main phase, I'm going to. Oh, well, you've got a flyer, haven't you? I think. Well, well, actually, I'll, I'll hit you for five as well, then. We'll just say we'll hit you as well for five. Because, you know, put your question. That just makes zero no. sense. <laughs> you don't know what I'm doing. Alright, now I'm going to play. One, two, three, seven, four. Um. Oh, it's only three. For Earwig. Uh, I'm going to play Earwig Squad's Prowl Cost. <laughs> uh, so when he hits the battlefield, his Prowl Cost was paid because I did damage with a rogue. Yeah? Seeing this, had to do damage with a rogue. And then he needs to go and keep a blocker up. Uh, search, tar uh, search target opponent's library for three cards and exile them. It's not your library. I know, that's pretty good. That's good for me. Obviously, Platinum Angel. It's actually one. Yeah. That was your bike total content? Yeah. Yeah. I think Bosch is a good idea. I'll pull from a turn yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. That's a fucking cracking shout. Um, what am I looking for? It's the. Pull from Pull from Tonight. That's the Bosch. It's three. So they just exiled face up, aren't they? Uh, exile them. Oh, so they're not even that hard to get back to. So just exile. You got cousin. Of course. Can you get shit back to him without that? Of course. What, what do you think my deck does? It, it exiles stuff. <laughs> so my deck is built around getting stuff out of exile because of exile. That's, that's the that's the pull from pull from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And then we've got what? We've got four, six <laughs> in there. Literally put my best pump <laughs> 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 I, I thought I'd get rid of the pull from a turn, that was Literally the only thing like, to do. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go rational as well. And then I'll go. Dan casts Ruination Guide, a 3 2 Eldrazi that has an ability called Ingest, which means whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of their library. It also gives other colourless creatures you control plus one plus oh. 
Why is my deck completely upside down? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realise that's what I did. That was definitely terrible. I'm the top card of my library. Nathan plays Battlefield Forge. He activates Osgear to create two solemn simulacrum simulacrums. Nathan gets two more tapped basics from his deck, and he then casts Hour of Revelation, destroying all non-land permanents, ruining Dan's whole career. He draws twice from the simulacrums and passes. I cast Open the Armory and tutor up Curse of Verbosity, because I desperately need to draw some kind of action. I curse Nathan with Verbosity and pass the turn. Joe plays a Blighted Woodland and cracks it immediately to fetch two tapped basics. He passes. Dan casts Ashiok Nightmare Muse, one of my favourite Planeswalker designs. It starts on 5 loyalty, he activates the plus 1 ability that creates a 2-3 nightmare token that exiles the top 2 cards of each opponent's library whenever it attacks or blocks. Ashiok's minus 3 ability bounces a non-land permanent to a player's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand. And it's minus 7 ultimate reads you may cast up to 3 face up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. He passes. Nathan casts Arcane Signet into Thran Dynamo into Osgear. He passes. I cast Holy Avenger, a fabulous if expensive equipment that grants its wielder double strike. And whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage, you may put an aura card from your hand onto the battlefield attached to it. Fun fact, you can use this to attach auras that are not meant to be attached to creatures. They will of course uh -huh. slide off the next time state-based actions are checked, but still, it's kind of neat. I crack my BAMP panorama to get a planes and pass the turn. Joe plops his mage ring on the table, a colourless land that lets him bank a bit of spare mana for later. He recasts Nikia and passes the turn. Dan plays a swamp and goes to combat. He sends the Nightmare token at me, so we each exile the top two cards of our library face up to its trigger. He uses Ashiok to make another Nightmare and passes the turn. So I'm going to attack the Fran Dynamo and attack the Fran Dynamo, so it gives me four mana. I then tap the Nosgear and sack a Fran Dynamo. Oh, Sorry, um, I also tap an extra mana. Then I will use that to sacrifice the Fran Dynamo, yeah. floating four mana, and then put that into the graveyard to then make a copy of it, bring two out. She love it. That one's that one. So then I've got two Fran Dynamos. Right? Oh, I'm just looking at your eye because I do So I'm going to tap the two Fran Dynamos for six mana. Yeah. Oh, in six mana, I'm going to float two and I'm going to float oh, no. Khan the Great Creator. <laughs> the Great Creator is a five loyalty planeswalker with a static ability that reads. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponents control can't be activated. This shuts off things like equip abilities and even mana abilities from mana rocks. It has a plus one ability that activates up to one non-creature artifact until end of turn into a creature with power and toughness each equal to its converted mana cost. But wait, there's more. Its minus two ability says you may choose an artifact card you own from outside the game or in exile. Reveal that card and put it into your hand. So those cards that Dan specifically took out of his deck, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you didn't look through the deck, right? No, actually you couldn't because he's been mad. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, yep, 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 that's still cool. That's still cool. Yeah. So that's the forge. He can't find it, no. He goes to my hand. Don't yeah, I do have nine mana. Uh, that's not my. I'm playing. I'm playing two colors. Oh right, sorry. But but you think it was wrong for us to be attacking you early? Yes, it was definitely wrong. Attacking you. <laughs> Next time I won't exile things that give him shit. I didn't realize you could do as much as you could do. Yeah. I don't know. You're... I think I would have made the same play. Yeah. He's got to get calm still. Yeah, you wouldn't have two life as well because I didn't have two life. Oh, yeah. oh, well. 
Since he doesn't currently have many artifacts worth making indestructible, he casts Triplicate Titan, a 9-9 artifact golem with flying, vigilance and trample. Oh, and also when it dies, it creates three, three three golems, each with one of the keyword abilities. He passes. I may have no horse in this race, but I've got a face steed. A 4-4 that when it attacks grants another attacking creature indestructible until end of turn. And whenever a creature or planeswalker you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. I pass. Joe untaps with Nikia and immediately gets started with his bullshit. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I was going to bounce some of your nations, but now I'm going to bounce some of yours. <laughs> Nullstone Gargoyle is a 4 5 flyer with whenever the first non creature spell each turn is played, counter that spell. He then casts the less offensive Biogenic Ooze, a 2 2 that when it enters creates another 2 2 ooze. The original ooze also has at the beginning of your end step put a plus one counter on each ooze you control and an ability to pay one and three green to create a 2-2 ooze token. He uses the ability to make another ooze and passes the turn putting 1-1 counters on his new little family of oozes. Dan goes straight to combat and sends a nightmare at Nathan. Dan and I each draw from the curse and then we each exile the top two cards of our libraries. Nathan blocks the Nightmare with the Triplicate Titan. Dan ultimates Ashiok and casts Seaborn Muse, Archetype of Endurance and Beast Whisperer, all from Joe's Exile. Beast Whisperer has whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Ashiok's ability puts all three spells onto the stack as part of the resolution of the ability, so Dan would not be able to draw from it, <laughs> but we didn't know any better. Archetype of Endurance is a 6-5 with creatures you control have hexproof and creatures your opponents control lose and cannot have or gain hexproof. And Seedborn Muse is a 2-4 with untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. We'll go Daunty. Get yours because you can't get them back if I've got it if I look at your top of four because it'll be down and face down. <laughs> Not that it matters anymore, really. You might hit that. You need Archetrap, right? You need Archetrap, right? <laughs> 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 Has he put... And I draw for that because of Beast Whisperer. You've done it again. Oh, shall I wait a minute? He's turned around and picked it up and it was backwards. Yeah. 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 You can trust me. Yeah, exactly. And I play Scribbling Buzz. I draw a card as well. That's only a prick. End of my turn. Back. Yeah. Nathan casts a sacrificial Doretti into Nullstone Gargoyle. He then casts Ugin's Nexus, a legendary artifact that prevents players from taking extra turns. And if it would be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. Dan counters it with Void Shatter, which thankfully exiles it, because you don't want it in the graveyard where Osgir can start copying it. Nathan minus two's Khan to pull the Nexus from exile into his hand and recasts the Nexus. He goes to combat and sends the triplicate Titan at Dan for nine. He then sacrifices Ugin's Nexus with Osgir and gets his extra turn. He passes to himself. Yeah, I'll play Angel of Ruins. Sure. Uh, so when Angel of Ruins ends, that will exile two target X uh, artifacts or enchantments. So. Sorry, Francis. He then casts Sun Titan. A 6-6 six, six that on ETB or attack may return target permanent with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. He returns Ash Barons. And um, Triplets is going to smash down again. <laughs> um. 
Post combat, he sacrifices the arcane signet to Osgear and then uses Osgear to create two untapped signet copies. He passes. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got my land. I can recast my commander. <laughs> what can I kill? Knifing practices. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not not kill. Yeah, I can kill something and I can turn something into an elf. Or we should turn it into a. You should turn this into an elf. Oh no, because it'll die, won't it? That'd be an elf. Oh, yeah, that then, because then when it dies, it's better when it dies, isn't it? You've got, no, you've got open mana so you can sack it in response. Oh, uh, right. You went there, of yeah. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> this is my deck. Do you want to see how I work it works? <laughs> it works. So I'll play Masterwork of Engineer 2, which is. Oh no, it's gone. It's gone. I just tried that. Oh, okay. There's no artifacts in the pool. Let's no stick here then. It's fine. Sure. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> I'm not doing anything else in this, in this game. Uh, so, what was I doing to what? I'm clearly wide awake and fully invested in this game, but somehow I mess up the sequencing a bit. But it's okay. My friends understood what I intended. I cast Valorous Stance to destroy Osgear. In response, Nathan sacrifices the Titan to Osgear, and it splits into its smaller parts. With the Titan gone, I enchant the Angel with Kenrith's transformation, which on ETB draws a card and the Enchanted Angel loses all abilities and is a green elk with base power and toughness 3-3. I go to combat, ride the face deed not into legend but into a sun titan and draw a card from the curse. I pass. Joe casts Urabrask, a 4-4 with creatures you control have haste and creatures your opponents control enter tapped. He then casts Soul of the Harvest, a 6-6 Trampler with whenever another non-token creature ETBs under your control, draw a card. We understand Joe meant to play them the other way around and allow him to draw. He goes to combat and sends the Soul of the Harvest at me for 6. Second main, he casts Null Spine Dragon, a 7-5 Flyer that when it ETBs you may discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. So he discards his hand and draws six. He passes. Oh, actually, I'll do, that. I'll do this first. I'll do this. And I'll let Sol... Top card of your library now. Deeper print. Okay, and then I'll play a land. It untaps this. And I'll just do it again. Trading the post. Oh, yeah. oh, damn it. My only way of getting fucking zero one goats in this deck. Oh man. no! Fucking exiles. What are you gonna do now? Die. Yeah, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna play the dude up. Any of his free or left? Sometimes we'll actually work for this deck. Nate, no, so I'm just gonna attack you with this. I need a giant with a hold yeah. two three beholder. So everyone two three. So my three three. Everyone exiles top two cards. Got a so first we draw. Yep. Near Battle Spear and oh, Land. Let's just go normal now because I can't get back. So, Ravager will. Me? I'm done. David? Yeah, that's how you still. Oh, yeah. And this. Ah, do Scribbly Blur again. Can't. <laughs> nibble your Scrib, baby. Scrib never means four to one day. Hmm. What was that? What? In response. <laughs> <laughs> I script nibble you. I nibble you script. Six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Uh, in response to you casting that, I script nibble. Yeah. Rough and good. Right. Destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Oh, my ball. <gasps> I activate Una. I no. do. Wait, but it's going to X on my shit, though. It's going to go for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I pick. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Yeah. So you got two. You got some other entire I mean, they die anyway, don't they? To be fair. Then I'm going to play Star of Hell. Oh, I need to play Bloody Humor again. Yeah, sure. 
I play Command Tower, I cast Nature's Law and get Canopy Vista. I cast SRAM, who draws a card whenever you cast an Aura, Equipment or Vehicle spell. I cast Arden, who at the beginning of combat on your turn may attach any number of Auras and Equipments to target permanent or player. Joe plays a forest. He casts the rhythm of the wild. <clears throat> it's an enchantment that makes his creature spells uncounterable and gives his non-token creatures riot, meaning they enter the battlefield with his choice of a plus one counter or haste. He casts Swiftfoot Boots. He casts Goreclaw, a 4-3 legendary bear with creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less to cast. And whenever it attacks, each creature with power 4 or greater gets plus 1 plus 1 and gains trample until end of turn. He puts the boots on the bear, giving it haste and shroud. Me? It's a fucking villain. Alright, me, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I think it should be one more. I'm gonna run. Yeah, right. Absolutely yeah. cocked. Oh, I just played some creatures. I wasn't good for that. Enjoy me. <laughs> 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 what a fucking manner. Hurry up and kill people, <laughs> Nathan casts Bosch, a 6 7 trampler that can pay 3 and a red to sacrifice an artifact and deal damage equal to the sacrificed artifact's mana value to any target. He's not going to check for the dark <laughs> <laughs> You could do to take Dan out. Yeah, wait, I see it. It's a nine fly. That's easy He then casts Spelden, a 2 3 with a tap ability that costs 2 and a red, that can create a token copy of a creature in his graveyard, except it's also an artifact and gains haste. It must be sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah, I'm just going to kill you, Dan. Nathan passes. I cast Abundant Growth, enchanting a forest and draw a card. So, uh, this, this phase of exile on that, isn't it? Ah, I want to know what it is! Who <laughs> <laughs> was I playing when you looked at it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing oh, right. it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He's putting it there. I'm just going to suck an ass move. He's putting it there so when you're not looking, he can look peek his feet. Yeah. I recast Galea, check the top of my library and pass. That's why I killed you because Thanks, mate. Thanks. He was doing a big favour. Appreciate that. That's an eight help, that is. <laughs> Joe casts Horde Smelter Dragon, a 5 5 flyer that can pay 3 and a red to destroy target artifact and gets plus X plus O, where X is that artifact's mana value. He gives it a plus one counter from the riot and then equips it with the boots. He casts Experimental Frenzy, an enchantment that lets him look at and play the top card of his library but the catch is that he cannot play cards from his hand. It can also destroy itself for three and a red. He goes to combat and sends the dragon at Nathan for six. He passes. Oh. I'll pay three. It's not good in here. I'll tap and thousand of the third part. And <laughs> you it. Token copy of, I think, I think Angel of Ruin. Okay. It's a token top, it's not actually there, but I'll put it there for now. Nice sort of yeah, come out. See if it is. I just um, like it. That block that, and I block that. Well, that's what's real. No, you I broke the dragon. I block the artifact. <laughs> you broke the dragon. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't poke the dragon. Right, go to combat. Yeah, but poke the dragon. It's probably the experiment of Freddy. The angel. But... The golem. That. And Bosch will go at you, Joe. Surely you just caused the game name. I'll put a barrier to speak up for 20 minutes. So you take 9, 5, 6. I'll call it 9. And then I will pay 4, 72 to throw the angel token at your face. Then Joe's already screwed. How much do I take? You only take 5. You take it. 
Shit, we take it. Sacri- oh no, it's a token, so it's actually no. nothing, isn't it? So you take nothing. You're a user, Sticky. I'm a fucking idiot. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, I even said that earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, it's so. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't like Felder and Bosch together. We don't actually like that one. I know it looks bad, but with what's in my hand and on top of my library, I can see a route to victory. So I'll let him play out his new deck and give him the opportunity to either mess up or earn the win. He recasts Osgir and passes. I cast Behemoth Sledge, an equipment that gives plus two plus two, trample and lifelink. Attack for six. Trample lifelink. Uh, yeah, I've got nothing to drop. Um, no, I need that for just combat damage. Six. And you gain six life damage. Yeah. So I'm going to play Felden again because it was one of my best shots at killing me. I'm going to re summon Triplet Titan. And then I'm going to pay one, two, that's that six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to play Phyraxian Triform, basically the same card as Triplet Titan. Um, and then I'll go to combat. Oh no, no, so then Osgear will do his ability. That, uh, that will summon the Angel of Ruin. So Angel of Ruins will exile that and that. Right, and that right. creates two token copies of the right. intervention. Oh, okay. Yeah, nice. He swings with Triplicate Titan. It's three little babies and Bosch. I block Bosch with the now indestructible Galea. Take 18 and gain 6. Nathan passes, and when sacrificing the token Titan, it splits into more baby Titans. Ah, it's so close. The lifelink and blockers in my hand can keep me in the game, and the rogue's passage on top of my library can get him with commander damage next turn, but I can no longer protect Galea and my artifacts from Bosch and the Angel of Ruins. Bish bash bosh. My more recently shot videos have less narration but more in game banter. So try that one next. And thank you so much to our Patreon, The Talking Oddish.